Hi, I'm Pierre Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. It's a time of changing activities here in the bee yard. I am very near the end of my nuke production. I've got roughly 40 nukes left to go. So I'm building up very nicely. I've got uh, a variety of different products here. My Saskatranus nukes, my Italian nukes further on. I'm also doing single frame nukes here uh, with an Italian queen and a single frame of brood that I am using uh, or providing for requeening colonies. Uh, so requeening colonies that need just a new queen for making splits, um, or it's even worked so far with laying workers. We've got four or five frames of bees in there. Um, what the way I recommend starting a requeening a colony like that. If you don't have a full nuke to use, what's worked so far is take your colony that needs requeening, put a sheet of newspaper over the top, reduce everything to a single brood chamber if you can, put a sheet of newspaper over the top, and put this single frame nuke in the super above. Um, let them work their way through the newspaper. If it's got lots of laying workers, I might put two layers of newspaper to slow down the process of them eating through and uh, let them eat their way through. Gradually, bees will join the group upstairs and uh, the brood in there and the new queen will suppress the um, laying worker uh, tendency in the hive and very soon we have accepted a new queen in the hive. Then after maybe a couple of weeks, you can consolidate everything, reorganize your new brood chamber. But so far it's working very effectively. And next year, right from the start, I think I'll be offering single frame nukes for just that purpose. Anyway, the purpose of today's video is going to be going back through my um, honey production hives that I've uh, rearranged using the Demary method. So I've already done one of those videos, but today I'm gonna go through the rest of these hives that I've uh, done that rearrangement of the brood chamber. I think there's four or five of them that I've got to do it with. Um, and I've got to make sure there's no queens. Well, I've got to remove queen cells. So this colony, for example, there will probably be queen cells in the upper brood chamber, although they're only separated by one super. My bet is that there will be some queen cells developing there. Likewise, this hive will need that procedure done. This hive will, that hive will, this hive will, and this one I already did. That's the one I did the video on before. So there's no, I know there's no queen cells upstairs there. Uh, that's just empty equipment right now, temporarily empty. So we're on a cool, cloudy morning. The bees are not up and playing yet, but they will be shortly, uh, which means all the field bees are in, which means I'm gonna need to use a lot of smoke because I'm gonna really tick them off by going through the brood chamber. But we'll see what happens. Uh, wish me luck. And also I think while I'm at it, I might try and straighten that colony out as well. Really what I need to do is raise the corner of the pallet up, but I might just raise the corner of the beehive up when I've taken those brood chambers off. We'll see. Anyway, let's get started. We'll get my gloves on, get my smoker going, and we'll be ready to go. So just as a reminder, what's happened here is last week, well it's now eight days ago, I took what was the brood chamber the, this was the bottom super that was the second bottom super and I found the queen put her down here with, on one frame of capped brood and uh, several frames of drawn comb and several frames of foundation now there's a queen excluder here holding the queen in place at the time I removed any queen cells that were developing here because all of these most of these hives were starting the process of swarming. This year we've had a lot of bees hives wanting to swarm even though they had plenty of room on them. So uh, apparently it's happening all over the state. So anyway that's what's happening here. It's called the Demary method for um, depopulating the brood chamber. 
So we're gonna get a bit of smoke up here. Right now, what I expect, because there's a gap between the queen and the rest of the brood chamber, we could have queen cells here. So I'm just gonna quickly go through these top brood chambers to make sure there's no queen cells up here. If there are, they're gonna be removed. And uh, I'll take it for granted that the queen is gonna be perfectly well doing it down here. So let's get on with it. should be full of bees. This is just the sort of thing that they don't like this time of day. Not that full of bees actually, come to think of it. But Good deal of the brood may have moved downstairs. No queen cells there. Of course, this upper brood chamber may not have had all that much brood in it when I did the split or manu manipulation. No queen cells. So now, this super up here has no uncapped brood. All the brood upstairs now is capped brood because it's been eight days since the, uh, the might, that means there might, might be just some brood. If the eggs were laid the day of the split, there might be, yeah, there's a few capped, uncapped larvae here. But apart from that, nothing younger. looking for queen cells. There's a queen cup there but with no eggs or larvae to put in it. There will not be a spawn from there. Yeah, so this brood chamber was clearly not one that was as strong as some of the others. So this was a preemptive strike on this colony. Oh, hello, Amy. Hello. Just quick, trying to quickly go through my hive that I did the Demary method on. Yes. So I'm removing queen cells. Like, and you helped me with the video last week, right? Yes. So I'm just gonna try and quickly. Oh, they're filling up with honey, which is nice. Nice. So I just want to quickly go through these just to make sure we remove the queen cells. Mm -hmm. So. Smoke is struggling to keep lit. Got too many fine pine needles in there. So Amy is being come on over here. <laughs> Amy's been expanding her apiary recently. Yes. So how's your apiary going? Quite well, growing rapidly. Uh -huh. Growing rapidly. The ones at the house are filling up with honey. Um, Actually, I'm going to interrupt for a second. I've got this was a frame that was from another hive which had a poor laying queen. Yeah. See all this drone combing here? What I'm going to do is just keep this frame right out to the edge. So this will eventually become, this is just going to become a honeycomb anyway. Mm -hmm. But as a matter of course, if I find a comb like that with lots of drone brood, because those cells are permanently stretched like that, they get pushed to the outside, so they ultimately become a honey frame. Even if I'm not making the whole super a honey super, it right. becomes a honey super, so they don't keep on making drones with it. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. That's quite all right. 
has an ice cream brood. There is a queen cell or two here. Yeah, they made a couple. So there's two. There were two queen cells there. So how many hives have you got going now? I have eight. Eight, lovely. Yeah. Got uh, some that are filling up with honey, some that are not just in the process of building up. They're still singles. We've got a decent honey flow start for yeah. this spring. Yeah. It's, uh, this, these are actually one of my, some of my very few hives I have set up for actually honey production. All my other hives are split down to nukes. So I've got, I'm not going to be harvesting much early summer honey this year. Yeah, I, I didn't expect too, too much honey this year. I hope, we get, I hope we get a fall honey for that. Yeah. Okay, some more queen cells here. Get them out. Would you like me to bring the camera closer? Sure, yeah. It's good to have a friend in the bee yard. <laughs> Especially a friend who's prepared to come into the bee yard when you're going through the brood chamber cutting out queen cells because <laughs> and uh, Amy doesn't have her full bee suit on. I don't. So we're going to see if uh, if I manage to avoid really taking these bees off or not. Yeah, I paid for only having a jacket on the other day. I oh, caught no. one in the in the leg. Yeah, I must say, since I changed over to this bee suit, this sort of triple layer bee suit, I've only had two stings um, through, the, through the suit. One was in the arm last week, mm -hmm. and one was where they got up into my boot. Oh. Uh -oh. I must have uh, not tucked, tucked, the, tucked the leggings into my boot so well. Yeah. yeah, the triple layer suit, I haven't had a sting since I've been wearing the pants yeah. with this. It's it's a little unnerving because it kind of feels like you don't have much on with the breeze going through it. It, it does. It, it, exactly. <laughs> it takes a lot of getting used to. You put it, it on and you feel like I'm doing my, I'm going into my beehive with no pants on. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, but that breeze is refreshing. It certainly is. Okay, so that is the last brood comb and the last brood comb having a couple of queen cells there. And again, see the cap, the brewed from a laying worker hive. It's been re-utilized, re but not wanting it to be. Once a, you've had laying workers in a hot frame, the comb is permanently stretched. And so you've got to consign it to either honey production or scrap it, melt it down and be done with it. Which is what I'll do after I've extracted the honey from these ones. I'll just melt these ones down. Now, Peter, if you if you mash that down, will they rebuild it in the proper size, or is it just no? Because it's still the base has been already stretched out. Right. So even if you sort of cut them down, the stretch the cell has already been stretched. Right. Big and fat, so it will be a permanent drone cell. So we've gone through the two former brood chambers here. I don't need to go into the honey supers because there were no larvae in those before and from previous experience I don't think I'll need to go into that super there um, at least not yet I probably will do in a week or two um, now this hive is tipping so I'm gonna see what I can do about uh, propping it up a bit see if I can find a wedge let's see this is heavy Tell you what. You want to hand and give a hand? You, you might be able to kick it in there. <laughs> I can lift the pallet as well. For it. I'll, I'll lift. Maybe you can just put a little pressure on there. But okay. One second. Yep. What I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is I'm going to lift the pallet. I'd like you to push this in okay. with your foot. You got Ready? it. Yep. Well, good. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Perfect. It's considerably better. Okay, let's uh, move on. I was reluctant to put the hot smoker on the styrofoam hive. <laughs>
This colony's got a significantly bigger population than the last one did. A lot more bees up here. As I say, why can't it have been a sunny morning? Because <laughs> all these fields yeah. are in. So, Peter, I am going to go put my pants on because they are bouncing off me like crazy right now. Okay, so right, right, I'll set this right over up. here. <laughs> Piss. Like pissing off a hive when you've got your friend with you. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, I think of all the hives in the yard, this one is the one with the biggest attitude. Um, so it's one that I would really have preferred to do during a sunny afternoon. But sometimes you just don't have that opportunity. I certainly got plenty of queen cells, there's three so far. Four. queen cells. They are doing what they would effectively be as an emergency supersedure because the bees upstairs here perceive that we have no queen in the hive because she's three supers away down here. And so what they're doing is they're taking larvae that were destined to become worker bees and turning them into queen cells. Now when they do that you don't make the best quality queens that way necessarily. Because they're emergency queen cells, also what can happen is they can take larvae which are fractionally too old and make queen cells out of them. And that makes for a much shorter lived queen, a less good quality queen. You can see the queen cells in here tend to be quite a bit smaller than something like a normal supersedure cell or a normal cell for normal queen production. So this is not the best way it's certainly one way of producing a lot of queen cells, but it's not re really going to produce you the best quality queen cells. So I wouldn't use this as a method of making more queens for your apiary. We'll do videos about how to do that very soon, because now that I'm down to a manageable number of bee bees, I'm just about in the process of getting into my queen production which I will probably start probably next week. We've got drone cells. This is one frame which is going to get scrapped later. One super done. The big difference between looking at queen cells in a from in the top of the hive rather than the bottom of the hive, you're dealing with a lot less bees. This, if these brood chambers were down there full of queen cells and I was shaking them out, all hell would be breaking loose bees flying around there. Still not being very happy about it and they're still having a go with my mail They're actually having a go with the camera too. And they, they love going at the camera. I think the camera's been tagged with a lot of pheromones. Yeah. And so it tends to make the sound quality really bad. I apologize for that. But uh, working, cutting out queen cells at the top of the hive is one a lot easier cutting out queen cells at the bottom of the hive. Because it's up a lot less bees. 
out just before the these are not the best quarter cells to use for um, brewing an acury because they're they're emergency queen cells. Right. So quality queen cells so what I should be doing is I'm gonna be doing some some um, drafting probably next week. What I should be doing is harvesting a bit of this royal jelly because there's an awful lot of royal jelly here going to waste. Take some and put it in the refrigerator and freeze it. Uh, so you actually have a uh, a bee stung your camera, right in the camera case here, <laughs> and there's a stinger stuck in it. Yep. No. Uh, but however, we can see them crawling all over the camera here. So. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Continue the process, but uh, that's a, a video for another day. Girls, girls, summer. Summer down.
the most fun thing that you do. Is that for my sake? <laughs> Partially. I don't like irritating bees. <laughs> Out they come. Full of bees. So, as I say, most of these hives were looking to swarm before, and by doing this manipulation, we can stop swarming in its tracks, um, at least temporarily, uh, for two to three weeks. But uh, it does require, it's a lot more labor, it's very labor intensive, but it's a way in which you're most likely to uh, find queen cells because you're waiting for them to grow, that sort of thing. You know the schedule, you know when the queen cells are produced. And uh, there are a lot of variations of the Demary method. I'm really only scratching the surface here. But, you know, I'd say that uh, my, in my yard yesterday, um, when I was going through looking uh, for, I was going down to single brood chamber management, I found a couple of hives that were swarm, uh, had swarm cells in, and it was a really, I found it a very useful way to reposition everything so that I was confident in leaving the bees and that I wouldn't be losing a swarm later. So if you've got a couple, few hives, it's something I'd certainly look at experimenting with. Just gonna say I didn't see any blue cells, but now I've got one. Keep you humble. Keep me humble. Oh, I dread the thought of that. Working with a mean hive and realizing your veil is undone. Oh, that would be awful. One sting's bad enough. Multiple? when you're ticking the bees off. <laughs> Reason being, the bees go after Amy. Right. Yeah, glad I could help. At least I have a purpose. I have a purpose. Did you see that one? Well, then? Yeah. Just, say, I'll, I'll not Just a cup. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Empty, but still yeah. to check. It is so easy to miss them. It is. They're very good at hiding them sometimes. That's why it's worth shaking the bees off the frame. It does tick the bees off more, but it is worth shaking the bees off. When you have to go through and take, take out queen cells like this, it really is the face to shake the frame. Empty cups there, but description. Okay. We have done this one. We've just got one smaller one to do. And I wonder if a smaller one where there's only one super between the brood chambers. It would be interesting to see if we have uh, less queen cells. Because the pheromones will be closer to the source of pheromones. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Just a reminder. easier to get these blue frames out because when I set up this demerium split and I put these brood chambers up I reduced the 10 frame brood chambers down to 9 frame supers and it makes getting these combs in and out much easier so you're doing less serving well, there goes a theory about queen cells and <laughs> if they're closer to the hive they're closer to the brood chamber but they're still acting like they are separated from the queen Five green cells on our first frames. knobbly combs like this. this is the sort of frame where they can be really buried in there. Look at that, wow, that's beautiful. But, look at this, I shake it <laughs> off. The other queen cells are hidden down the sides here. It's overlapping each other. It's not that they're deliberately hiding them, it's just that by default, they're well hidden. I just love looking at a frame of brood like that. Get, move out the other four, last 40 nukes. The 
this weekend. We should have honey production going on here. Yeah. Cut down the competition. <laughs> Those 40 nukes still act like uh, 20 small production hives. They're competing. That was a big one on this side. Yeah, two, two big ones on this <laughs> side. Great big, huge. Look at them. That's not always a good sign. I mean, we like big queen cells, but these are abnormally big. I don't, that wouldn't be, well, no, no problem. They're disappearing anyway. another cup right here. Now the girls should concentrate on putting royal jelly into brood cells downstairs instead of queen cells upstairs. So we 
uh, thoroughly checked off the beat now. They'll, uh, we've gone through all those canary method manipulations here where we've split the hive, moved the brood chamber upstairs. We've now removed all the queen cells from the former brood chamber and the queen is busy in the lower brood chamber creating a, a new brood nest. The uh, bees will be back, are back filling these brood chambers now, will become honey supers and indeed they're putting honey in the honey super as well. Uh, I'll have to keep an eye on things, it's a strong hive, I'll have to watch to see if this brood chamber doesn't become overcrowded, um, but we should have plenty of brood in here and we can always manipulate it again and move brood up into the upper chambers later if we want to keep persevering with this tactic. Um, it is labor intensive, it does disturb the bees, um, but it's something well worth trying. You can build up some big colonies, which can produce you a big honey crop. I'm Peter Cow the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.